Some of you that are in this group at the moment are here in Bali and some of you are elsewhere so blooming together is uh, uh, it's a space for sharing our hearts uh, I recently shared with a friend like what is it all about what is it that I have been doing and what is it that I want want for myself and for others so one short one-liner what it's all about uh, can be head to heart so blooming together at the moment is everything that supports us from head to heart I can feel my heart beating. Different insects, birds, and the water in the backdrop, the roosters. I feel my heart beating. This is my neighbor. Om Swastiastu Selamat Pagi. Yeah. <sighs> so what I'm sharing comes from me, of course, and some of what I'm sharing I have received from my teachers. One of my teachers over the years is uh, Guru Dev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and he has like a quote that I have shared sometimes and it is like that we as babies we were born with silence in our hearts we were born with sincerity and peace and as we grew up somehow we lost this silence this peace in our hearts and we moved up in our heads and with different perceptions and different beliefs and judgments about ourselves and the world. So he shares that the journey from the head to heart is the reverse journey of, yeah, we're actually complete and enlightened. We are, we are okay, we are complete when we are in the womb, when we are newborn, we have that peace in us and we, have, we still have it, it's just that somehow most of us have forgot it. So the journey back to the heart is, is what he shares about enlightenment. So sometimes I share what I have received from Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, his teaching. And nowadays, since the last years, I have another teacher who lives here in Bali. It's a traditional teacher in Vedanta. Vedanta means self-knowledge. Veda means knowledge. Anta means the end portion of the Vedas. And it, that part of the Vedas is talking about me. It's talking about you. What I really am, what you really are. And it's a traditional teaching from teacher to student over thousands of years. Um, and it's teaching something that has been downloaded thousands of years ago by Rishis. And then it's an oral tradition that they share this knowledge further with mantras. And then they unfold the mantra, sound vibrations. And... Uh, it is its own means of knowledge, this, this body of knowledge, the Veda, the Vedanta, it has its own way of knowledge. This knowledge 
can be um, seen as a, as a six six sense. So we have we have the sight, we have the hearing, we have the taste, touch, and smell. So we have these five senses where we can perceive things, and that's what we perceive everything. Like that's like how we live in the world through perception and inference. Inference means when I see there is smoke, I assume that there may be some fire there because I see smoke. That's like inference. And they say that this wisdom cannot be understood through perception, through our five senses, through perception, or through inference. It's not logical and it's not illogical. It has its own way, its own logic. And they compare it that they say that this wisdom, the Vedanta, is like a six, six sense. It's like a six means of knowledge. In the same way that my eyes is the means to see colors, this six body of knowledge, the means, is a way to know what I am. And what I am is not changing, it's limit, limitless, indestructible, indestructible, it's never born, it never dies, etc. And um, Yeah, so they're making the description, the symbolic description, and like in the same way that the, I need the ears to hear sound and the eyes to see color. I need these six means of knowledge to know what I am, to know what you are. That is kind of the, that is one short description of what Vedanta is, Vedanta, and what I have been reflecting, what I have been receiving from my teacher over the last years and some of that I'm sharing in the space and in the workshops that I'm facilitating through Blooming Together, through circles, through cer ceremonies, um, both in person and online. 